Hey, Coach, congrats on the win. Um, Last weekend in Charlotte, uh, after the Duke loss, you mentioned that uh, if your team can kind of learn from playing in that game and just playing in the whole ACC tournament uh, in general, um, that it would help you guys prepare for a weekend like uh, like this down in uh, Louisiana. Uh, how do you think the the tournament prepared you last weekend for tonight's uh, big win? Well, the ACC tournament is just a grueling, grueling tournament. you got 12 teams, 12 great teams, and <clears throat> some are fighting for postseason bids. Some are fighting for hosting, uh, to be a hosting site, and some are, you know, fighting for a national seed. But it's uh, 12 great teams, so I told them that's the toughest tournament they'll ever play in. And it drains you a little bit, and it taxes you a little bit. And uh, just learn from it. And then this weekend, you're going to have four great teams. I didn't know this environment was going to be quite as electric as it was. This was a really, really – it was an unbelievable baseball environment. It wasn't hostile – like some baseball environments, they're just great fans with respect for the game and, and pull for their team. But uh, there was an electric atmosphere. and uh, But I think going through the ACC tournament did help them, and I think they did learn from it. Coach, our next question is going to come from Rob McLam. Uh, Elliot, when you went into this game, obviously you had a freshman. You went into yesterday's game, you had freshmen. Two freshman pitchers help you get uh, past a regional host. Uh, your thoughts on that? just how much they've grown up. I've talked to both of them after the game. Uh, I talked to the team after the game. And and uh, when you see, you know, part of it is is you got to give them credit, like Matt Willis and Chris Billman. So you have to give them credit. But anytime a person grows and learns and develops, then you got to give leadership at the top. And our senior leadership, our, our older guys in that locker room, Devontae Brown, uh, you know, JT Jarrett, the list goes on and on. Everybody in that locker room, Johnny Butler, you know, Reed Johnston, Evan Justice. It's an outstanding list. And what they have done, uh, setting the example, talking to them, and uh, providing leadership allows Matt Wilson to pitch in this environment and get down 4 nothing, but keep them where they are until we were able to claw back. And then Chris Philbin after having a, a two-run homer from a, uh, their top of the lineup is as good as any top of the lineup we saw all year. And uh, so it was uh, just uh, a lot of credit to our team, a lot of credit to those two guys, and uh, just really proud of everybody. Could you give us a sense of the atmosphere in the dugout when it was 4-0 and 5-3? to three? Uh, No, it was, it was okay. I mean, it was like – it was early. It was like second or third inning, you know. We, we got a good lineup, and, and uh, we knew – Everybody was kind of down the line of pitching. I thought they they got a great start from their guy. I think he was 4-0 of the year, but I'm not sure they expected to get the start they got from their starter. And I thought he pitched outstanding. And like I said, Matt Willison just kept them at bay, the two at homers. Uh, and, of course, he had a walk before each home run. I hope he'll remember that. And uh, But uh, we knew we'd get back in it. Terrell Tatum had the big hit when the rain started coming, the base was loaded. And I think that relaxed everybody a little bit. Devontae Brown's performance uh, in this tournament. Everybody knows the top four of your lineup uh, has, you know, they're all over double digits homers. Now he is too. Does this show that you have balance in that lineup throughout? We, I've said that. I said that coming into the season. I said that all season. Our one through nine uh, just finds ways to do their job. Nobody tries to do too much. Nobody tries to hit home runs. Nobody tries to be the guy they don't have to because they know they can just pass it to the next guy and, and just walk it down the line. And if we keep walking it down the line and, and stay with ourselves and stay in the strike zone, then we're going to be a tough out for, uh, for, for, for pitchers uh, next weekend. So next weekend, it's not clear yet. Uh, Nebraska won today. So how, how, what is your approach? Do you uh, watch the game tomorrow? How are you guys going to approach this coming week? Oh, we may not know what time the game is tomorrow. You said Nebraska won. So I guess they have a one game uh, thing on a um, on Monday and I, uh, uh, we may, may be flying back. I don't know. We're, we're trying to get out of here. I think we have to split the team up and, and get them out of here. We may not get back to like six or seven o'clock. So we may not. We may be in the air when that game is decided. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Coach Avent, your next question is going to come from Andrew Schnicker. Elliot, Sam mentioned this yesterday, but you guys have obviously had some had some heartbreak over the last several years in this round of the NCAA tournament. How good of a feeling is it to see this group 
go out there this weekend and just take care of business and get you guys back into the Super Regionals? Well, yeah, this group knows nothing about the things you mentioned, you know, the TCU, the Kentucky, and the Coastal thing at home. Uh, this group knows nothing about that. They just know who they are and what they're trying to do. And, but I was very pleased for them because this is a, like I said, beating this team twice with this crowd, and this is a good team. Wasn't just the crowd. I thought the crowd might have been worth a couple runs or maybe more. And uh, I just thought uh, I just thought our guys could beat this La Tech team, who's a veteran team. The coaching staff is unbelievable. They've done a tremendous job with these players. And as much as I think about our players in our locker room and our dugout, I know they think the same thing about their team. I saw them as I was walking off the field. There were a lot of good hugs and a lot of sad hugs because that's a great ball club. Okay, next question is going to come from Alex Sawyer. Yeah, Coach, the, the inning after a big offensive inning is always important for your pitcher to kind of, you know, keep that momentum going. Willitson in the sixth after your big fifth had probably his best inning of the game, shut them down quickly in his last inning that he worked. Just how important was that for him to come back out after the big break there, watch the team put up runs, and just shut them down, kind of not let them build momentum to get immediately back into it? Yeah, it's always what you want to do on the defensive end. If you score, you want to put up a zero, and when they score, you try to answer back. And, and, uh, I thought Matt gained some confidence through how he was pitching. He knew he had settled in. As a matter of fact, we, we gave great pause to take him out when we did. If it hadn't, because he was just starting to pitch better. And uh, if, if we hadn't had such a long inning there, he might have gone back out. But uh, we decided we'd go with Chris. We have time for one more question. J.B. Ricks. Hey, Coach, I appreciate you uh, taking out the time this late at night, and congratulations on the Super Regional bid. We spoke, and you've said it on record multiple times, how much confidence you have in this team as far as matching it up with all of the teams that you've been a part of during your illustrious career. But what proved that notion right about this team having a great chance to win it all this year based off what they did in Louisiana this weekend? I just think that – it's so tough to be where we are now, JB. It's so hard. If you think about 200, whatever, 86, and everybody's putting money into baseball now. It's not like 286 team and these guys don't really care. People are putting money into, into uh, baseball itself throughout the country. They're putting money into stadiums, and uh, it pays off in recruiting. So to be down to the final 16 teams uh, at the end of the day tomorrow is amazing. And we've done it with a few. This team reminds me so much of our first team uh, that I had here. Just a few uh, select guys. We played nine guys for like three months now. We uh, five guys have put, pitched the bulk of our innings uh, all year, and we got a bullpen that stepped up the last month. But uh, and they're ready to go too when needed. But I just couldn't be more proud of a group of people. And I was talking. We had so many parents here. When I was on the way to the bus, I spoke to every set of parents uh, for these kids. And I told them, forget how good a ball players your sons are. And I know you're proud. I know you love your kid no matter what. But you, I, I think since they've been gone for you for three or four or five years, I don't know if y'all understand what kind of – these guys are men. They're young men, but they're men. What y'all have done in raising your children, you couldn't be more proud because these are tremendous uh, – group of men who represent NC State University and their families. Thank you, Coach Avent, and thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you all. Sir. Bye, Fred. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks, Fred. All right, guys, have a great evening.